first we will see surrogate key before store, uh, going to the uh, what we say this particular CD. Why? Because surrogate key will be used in the SCD SCD station. So surrogate key. What is mean? What, uh, what do generating unique key okay let us say it starts at 400 okay if i am if i try to give values in a sequential way 1 2 3 4 till 400 okay tomorrow if i start run once again it should run from it should start from 401 okay if i want it to run from 401 okay there should be a file which holds the uh, yesterday's last generated value or it should hold a value where it denotes what to be generated tomorrow if, you, if the state file is not there, whenever I run, every time it takes again uh, from the one uh, number one only. It will not start from 400. You are able to get me, right? Yeah. Today if we run the surrogate key generator, let us say it generated up to 400 record, uh, 400 uh, number. Okay, tomorrow if I run the surrogate key generator, it should once again start, it shouldn't start once again from one. It should start from 401. So there should be a file which holds the state of this particular surrogate key. State in the sense what needs to be generated tomorrow. That particular thing should be stored somewhere and tomorrow when we run the surrogate key generator it should pick up that particular uh, tomorrow generated value as the initial value for that particular run and it should complete the uh, what is a surrogate key generation process. Okay, that is how you use the state file. Second, we, when we talk about database sequence Database sequence, you know, right? Create, okay, sequence ROM, start with one, increment by one, okay, max value of 10,000. You are able to understand the syntax. I am uh, creating a database sequence. Just like, uh, you are able to understand me, right? What is a sequence in data, database? Database. In the database, there are various objects like tables, views, indexes, okay, sequences, various objects will be there. So, what is the use of having a sequencer? Mm. Okay, database sequencer is an object, okay, is an object which will help in generating unique values. Let us say in a, while a table create, while, when you try to create a table, okay, one of the columns is like a primary key and you need to give unique values to that particular primary key column. Let us say in that scenario what you will do, you will generate a sequence. Now, sequence syntax is something like create sequence with the start with one, I am saying that the sequence which I am going to create, its name is Deepthi. It should start with one. Okay. It should increment by one. Like when it starts running, okay, it should increment, right? If every time if it generate one, there's no point of writing the sequence. So whatever value you want you can use. Increment by two. Okay, start with one, increment by two. So value should be something like one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, because increment means it will add up this particular digit to the earlier generated value. So max value as max value as max value equal to max value equal to some ten thousand. Uh, you are able to understand the right what is the meaning of sequence and why we are creating the sequence. So this particular sequence that we are going to generate can be used in your surrogate key generator and surrogate key generator actually uses this particular sequence to create the uh, values increment by two. That's it. Is also work. 
okay now how the values would be is something like see uh, If you try to run it, it is going to generate uh, uh, values in this way. One, three, five. One second, I am running this thing. See, seven. You are able to understand, right? If you want to generate some unique values, you can use this particular dp that next val. Okay, in the primary key generation process, insert into table values in the primary key column. Use dp that next val so that whenever it runs, it is going to generate a unique value. Okay, this is the database sequence. You understood, right? Yeah. Now what I am going to show you, this is how your surrogate key generator stage would look like. Now what I am going to do, in this surrogate key generator, I am having a, what you say, I, I will tell you the properties, you don't worry about it, just observe the source name, okay, I am having a source name in uh, in a desktop source surrogate key file. What I am going to do, I am going to delete it. Okay, so now we don't have any surrogate key file. Okay, this surrogate key file is nothing but your state file. Remember that. I told the concept of your state file, right? Okay. Now what are all the settings that you see here in the create uh, section? Now if you don't have any input and output links for a surrogate key generator, okay, even then it can be used. Generally a state, at least it should have a single input or single output, right, generally. But it's not a restriction. There are lot of stages which can work on their own, like stored procedure is one stage which can work on its own, it doesn't require any any intervention or not. Now, <laughs> let us consider this one, I think surrogate key generator is there, and this surrogate key generator, how we are going to use without any input and without output, if I am going to use without input and without output, what are all the options that would be visible here, see, somebody speaking, you are able to hear the voice? Yeah, I can hear you. Who is speaking in between? If you want, I can do you, but uh, I think it's See? lost in the class. Uh, in a record, can you ask the instructor please? Okay, sure, okay, no problem. But please make sure that I'm in the class. Okay, I think the, one second, okay, Yes, sure, sir. I will let you know. Oh, thank you. That's what? You're over here, W3, and you're going to Oh, okay, okay. Fine, I'm, okay, okay. Parle, parle. You're on for a matter of good in this Okay, parle, parle. Welcome to GoToMeeting. Online meetings made easy. There are two other callers on the call. Later, once again. 
So when we are not using any input link and output link, uh, what are all the properties that are visible here? Okay, here there is one very good option called the view state file. Okay, I will show you how it is going to work. I'm coming to this uh, source. Welcome to GoToMeeting. Online meetings made easy. There are two other callers on the call. State file value. Now let us say I have created a flat file here. Okay. And the source name I have given target key file not yet. If you observe, I haven't uh, what is it? Uh, I haven't got the physical file. I have deleted it. Okay. What is the key source action? See, there are a lot of key source actions here. Create or delete. If you use create, it is going to create a flat file for you. That flat file is nothing but a state file. From run to run, it would be holding what should be the next generated value. Okay. Today, if I run for 20, to, uh, and when you try to view the contents of the particular state file, it would be 21. So that means from next time onwards, it should start with 21. That you are the meaning out of it. You got it, right? Mm -hmm. If you use database sequencer, see now it is going to ask what are all the uh, now uh, this database sequence corresponds to creating a particular sequence in your database. Now if I give proper values here, connection details like database type, if I select RT, okay and then use default database. So when I use Oracle, the settings would be changed compared to DB2. The values that would come here is username, password and the remote server. Okay, if I give all these details, this particular surrogate key generator packs to your database and it creates a what is the sequence file. That is what it does. You got it, right? Yeah. Now, now we will be seeing uh, this particular uh, source type as flat file and we will see how it is going to work for us now. Okay, when I have the key source action as create, okay, what are the options that you can have in case of key source action? Either you can create a new flat file or you can delete a new flat file. See the difference. If you use delete, if there is any file already existing, it is deleted. Now what I am going to do, I am going to create an uh, uh, this particular surrogate key file file. And what I am going to do, I am going to view the, okay. See, you are already deleted source name, right? I have already deleted the file in the physical location. Okay. Now, as I have placed here the property of create the flat file, uh, there is, uh, I have given that option, right? Create or delete. In the create or delete, I have selected create. So, yeah. this create, what it will do? It will create a flat file for me now. Okay. The flat file is nothing but a state file. From run to run, we can use this uh, uh, value to, to be shown. See? So for surrogate keys, there won't be any inputs and any output? No, no, no. It would be there, but there is a flexibility that you can use it without input and output. So when okay. you use a surrogate key without an input and output, what are all the things you can do? That is what I am showing. Okay. See, surrogate key file came into picture. That means it has created a file for me. You got it, right? Yeah. So it created a file for me. Now, now what I'm doing? I am going to. If you want to delete the surrogate key file, what you have to do? Just set this property of delete. That's it. No need to do anything. See, key source action equal to delete. If you do, and if you run it, it will delete the file that has just. Which one? Source name. The properties tab you mentioned source name, right? Huh. Yeah, before creating also some source name is there. Yeah, that means I am asking that create a particular file called source key file.txt in this location. That is what we use the create, right? Option. Yeah, yeah. If you are asking the surrogate key generator to create, it will ask what to create. So okay. for what to create, this is the answer create a surrogate key file that txt in this location. So now if you want to delete, okay, select this particular surrogate key file that's there 
and give the option of delete and when you run the file will be deleted. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now important topic is new state file. You can't view a state file directly. See how uh, how this particular data would be seen to you. Even though it is that .txt file, if you observe the data, see hmm. nothing would be there. In the data is there, it would be in binary format, not human readable file. So what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to I will show you that view how this view state file works. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to generate surrogate. Key. Okay? I'm using this surrogate key generator, and for the source I have put row generator. Okay? I'm trying to pick the records to the target. You are able to follow me, right? Yeah. Source, the surrogate key generator accepts a source. How many records you are going to generate? Here I am going to generate, here I have used the input and output for the surrogate key generator. Number of records that I am going to create is 10 out of the row generator. What are the columns that I am going to generate out of the The me is the column that is going to be generated out of my uh, row generator. Okay? okay, and what are the column that I am going to generate from the surrogate key generator? See, properties will change once we get this input and output links. It won't be same like when you without input and output, we were able to see only very limited properties like yeah. this state file or not delete or create something like that. Now see, properties got changed. What are the new properties that came? Generated output column name. What is the name of the surrogate key column that you are going to generate? It's S key. I have okay. written this one, S key. Okay. okay. What would be the generated output column? It's S key. Now what is the source name? Okay. Now this is the flag file that you have created earlier. This would be your flag file that you have created earlier. Now I am going to use the flag file. Where is this particular... Uh, this is the file that I have generated, right? So this would be my source name, okay? And source type is flat file. If you want to use the database uh, sequence, you can select the database sequence here, okay? Once you select this database sequence, okay, you need to give all the connection info and then the generator output column name would remain the same and what is the source name means here you need to give the sequencer name, something like uh, Deepti, that's it. You got it, right? Yeah. I would have Deepti is the sequence name that I have just created. So I need to give all the connections info and then the source name as Deepti, that's it. Okay, and I am uh, done with this thing. And uh, when I run, I could generate the values for me. So now I am using flat file and source name is equivalent to this one. So the surrogate key for, uh, for this one. And now what are all the options that are there? See, generate key from last highest value. Okay, generate key from last highest value. If we if we are saying no, that means every time it is going to generate starting from uh, once again from the uh, uh, sorry. Uh, what is it? The last generated value, let us say it is 400, okay? Next time we are going to run, it again picks the same 400 and it starts. So, surrogate key again here, unifix, sometimes you are going to generate the same value, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, what you are going to do? Generate key from last highest value, if you are going to put it as yes, what it is going to do? Last generated value, let us say 400. Today when you start running, it will not start from 401, but it starts from 400. So, okay. it, it, sometimes it may create a problem. If the requirement is something like you might delete the last generated value, you will not consider it. So, today when you start running, you, you can pick that particular 400 and you can start. Now, if you use generate key from last highest value equal to no, that means every time it starts reading from the state file, state file uh, data would be something like today if you have generated 10 records, okay, the last generated value is 10. If you open the state file, the value there would be 11. Always state file holds the value of uh, value of the surrogate key generator that it is going to generate tomorrow. Okay, it will not hold info like what is the last generated value. It will hold the info like what needs to be generated next. You understood, right? Yeah. Okay. 
and coming to the file block set, it is something like uh, I will show you with example this one how we are going to use it. File block set is something like there is no need to generate each uh, surrogate key generator one at a time. Okay, what you will do, you can uh, create a file block set something like 25 or 50 if you give every run it is going to generate 25 surrogate keys one time. It will generate 25 surrogate keys at a time and it will use that particular 25 generated surrogate keys from the cache. It will not run for each and every surrogate key that is need to be generated. If I give here 25, that means what it does? It is going to create a 25, uh, 25 uh, uh, surrogate key for me at a time. Okay, and it will put all those generated 25 surrogate keys in the cache memory. And when I, when I run the job, it is going to pick that particular surrogate key values from the uh, block size, which will be stored in your flat file, in your uh, state file. Okay. okay. File initial value is nothing but uh, if you observe uh, uh, the sequencer, I gave the value of start with. What the, what is the purpose of having start with? You are saying to the sequencer DT that you should start the sequence generation from one. Similarly, if you give file initial value as 20, some, something like that, okay, it would start generating values from 20, 20, 21, 22, something like that. Okay. You are able to follow me? Yeah. Any doubt so far? No. Okay. Initial value means it starts from uh, first and yes. right? Yeah. Initial value if you give as 20, that means it will start generating values from 20. File block size means if you mention some size. Ah, let us say with example only we will speak. Uh, what would be the size? Let us say 25. 25, okay. Uh, what it is going to do, when we hit the run button, it is going to generate 25 surrogate keys at a time. Whatever may be the source, uh, it, it doesn't worry. From the source we are using only 10 records, right? Even though you are generating 10 records, what it does, it is going to generate 25 surrogate keys for you. And it, would, uh, may, and it would place that surrogate key info, whatever 25 records that it has generated in the de demo file, so in the state file. Okay, next time when we run, it is not going to run once again the surrogate key. What it does, it sees the settings like, okay, fixed block size is being used, okay, and the value that you are using is 25. When it goes to the state file, it sees that the size that the block size is 25 and the last generated value is 10. So, it okay. doesn't run for the next 15 records. It just picks uh, from the already created uh, cache values from the memory. Why? Because today we are running only 10 surrogate keys, but the block size you have mentioned as 25. So 24 surrogate keys will be generated in memory. But in your job, they will, you are using only 10. Why? Because Rika, uh, the row generator you have mentioned the value as 10. Tomorrow when you try to run the job once again, again 10 more records is required, nothing more than that, right? So, it will not generate the 10, 10 uh, surrogate keys tomorrow. It will directly pick it from the state file that you have defined. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because that 25 values will be there in your cache memory. Now, you, you were able to follow me, no, Deepthi? Mm, yeah. If you get any doubts, just stop me and ask me. Please. This is a bit important stage, right? Because you would use it in your jobs. I told you now in the beginning how uh, in the complete training you will actually be using only handful of uh, stages, not the all the stages. From for the training sake, we would be explaining all the stages, but in real world you will be using hardly five to seven stages. So uh, one of these stages surrogate key. So it would be used uh, very much in your day-to-day uh, -day activities in the project. So, if you observe what are all the peak values that I have got here, see, surrogate key value starts with 1, by default it starts with 1, why because I haven't given any dummy value. So, surrogate key 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay. Now, we will view the contents of the file. There is a job that I have created to view the contents of the file, view state file. 
you see again it won't be having any input and output values. Please give this surrogate.php file here and mention new state file equal to yes. Once you put this option, you will not be shown any other option. Okay. Once you select this new state file equal to yes, you will have only two options. Surrogate source type as flat file or db2. <coughs> Sorry, uh, only flat file would be there. If you use the, uh, if you use uh, database sequence, it will give you last generated value out of your database sequence. Okay. Okay. And I'm using this flat file, <coughs> and I need to give the source name as a source file source file that you got it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got it right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm running it so that we will see what the state file has got. If you try to view the state file directly, see what would be the value. See. Are you able to understand any value created target this time? No, it is in binary format. So, I actually need to view this, but I have given that setting as view state file equal to yes. So, where I need to view in the director. Okay. See? 11 and 1000. 11, what does this 11 indicates and what does this 1000 indicates? Okay. <coughs> now, uh, coming to this 11, this is the... Uh, which one I am using actually? Why I got this 1000? 1000 is the max value that I gave. Sorry, tell me. You are creating surrogate case, right? Hmm. So, this is the state file that I am trying to view. The contents are something like 11 and 1000 are there. Okay. 11 is something like uh, we have generated surrogate key value till 10. Okay. What should be the next surrogate key value? That is what you are storing here it as 11. Okay. So, now I was able to see 1000. How come this 1000 came? What some setting might be there which has generated this 1000? Generally, here you get the block size. Have I given any block size while generating the surrogate key? No. Okay, you uh, you just hold on to this concept. Uh, I will tell you how this thousand came uh, in the later. So when you try to open the view file, okay, in the director, okay, uh, you will be uh, getting this info like what this uh, state file contains. Here, if you observe two values are the eleven and thousand. Generally speaking, this thousand should correspond to your block size. If you have given that twenty five, let us say we will run it once again. Here, why we have this thousand? Or what we will do? We will delete the file once. Generally, there you will get the info for a block size actually. You are able to understand uh, uh, what the uh, state file is going to store and how the uh, value is being retrieved from run to run, right? See, once we generate 10 records, okay, having 1 to 10. Okay, if the state file is holding the value of 11, that means next time when you try to run, pick it from 11. That is what the meaning out of it. Okay. Now I will create the file. Now if you have to, the delete has deleted the file, source.txt, what I am going to do? I am going to create it once again. Once I create, let us see whether it has got created. Yeah, it has got created. So what I am going to do, in the surrogate key file, I am going to do file initial value, okay, file block size. File initial value as 1, file block size as a, instead of system paper, I will use user specified and I am going to mention user specified block size as 25. Is that right what I am saying? Pixel block size I have used as user specified or system picked. If you use system picked, 
that means data says decides what would be the best uh, block size that it can generate. Yeah, now I got it. See, when when I haven't used this setting, it itself has used the default setting of thousand. Okay. okay. Now if I use twenty five, okay, ask me. Mm, yeah. No. Okay. I have given the block size. I'm going to compile it. Nithi, shall we sit on Sunday something like that and can we spend some 3 hours or 4 hours so that we can complete our processing stages? Okay. Uh, on Sunday, actually, um, Sunday morning, but the thing is, uh, on Sunday, actually, I will not be able to wake up a bit early. So, can you adjust for one day? Like, can, can you connect at 7.30 something my time? Is it not possible? 7.30? 7.30? Uh, how much time is uh, some three to four hours? Can you stretch that long? Three to four hours means it's difficult for me. It's too late for us. Means it will be at uh, like uh, twelve p.m. twelve a.m. like that. Yeah, I can understand. But uh, can't you stretch and uh, stretch up to that extent uh, uh, one day? Okay, that's okay. Why? Because we will cover some of the processing stages actually. Um, um, as you asked me to cover a bit faster, it's going still okay, much no, That's okay, no problem. Uh, for you, uh, if it is difficult, then uh, it's not an issue. If it, if you can adjust for one day, we can cover some of the stages. Okay, 12 okay. o'clock, it's uh, difficult for me, actually. <laughs> that means it's okay for me, it means two hours. Uh, uh, you mean to say two hours on Sunday? Mm -hmm. Two hours, okay. Okay, yeah, okay. What about Saturday? Saturday morning, generally you are having class, right? Yeah. My Saturday, generally also you are having the class, right? So, we will uh, sit for uh, two hours on Saturday also. Two hours okay. are, uh, if you can stretch one more hour, or we will see three, three hours then, is it fine? Okay. Mm -hmm. On Saturday yeah. three hours and Sunday three hours, six hours will be completed. Okay. What do you say? We will complete all the processing stages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That that thing we can do. And uh, coming to uh, we we have uh, now what we generated. We have generated this thing, right? Have we run this one? Yeah, mm -hmm. we have run it. So now we will see what what is the output of this. Uh, uh, peak. See? Okay, we have got all these values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. Now what we are going to do, we will see the state file. Even today also, uh, again after your class, a demo is there. So I thought of spending two hours today, but again it got constant. So, you, so that is why I actually require your help to complete a bit faster. <coughs> that okay. is why I am asking. Three, three hours if we sit, we will be able to complete a handful of uh, processing stages. Okay. Hmm. Okay, we will see the view state. See, now you are able to see properly, right? 11 and 25. Yeah. 11 corresponds to what should be the first value for, from the next run. 10 has been generated last and now when I try to run once again the same job, it has to pick from the next value. That is nothing but your 11. Okay? And coming to the 25, what it is going to do? Block. Yes, you, that means it has it, it indicates to the surrogate generator that bus don't run once again. The last generated value is 11, but you have already created 25 surrogate keys in the cache memory. You just pick it from the cache memory and use it. Don't run me once again. That is what it is going to say. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got it, right? Yeah. Now what we are going to do? Now let us say there is a scenario like you need to update a surrogate key. Sometimes what happens, you are trying to generate the surrogate key and you are trying to put it into a, uh, what we say, a primary key column. Let us say that is the scenario. Okay, some, uh, that is the process that should be followed in the project. Okay, there is a table. In the table, there is a primary key column and the values into the primary key column ideally should come only from the surrogate key generator. That should be the case. But somehow, a person has entered into database directly 
and he has given some wrong value. Wrong value in the sense, you see, yesterday the sequence has run for 10 records and, it, and tomorrow when we run the sequence, it should start from 11th record. But somehow one person has entered and given the primary key value as 20. Okay, he mm -hmm. has inserted one record with value as 20. So now if I run the sequence generator, what would happen? It will generate from 11 to 20. Again 20, it tries to insert into the table and it will generate an error saying that constraint error. We are able to follow me, right? Yeah. Ideally, there is a primary key column and ideally speaking, the column should get values only from sequence run. Sequence run means dt is the sequence that you have created. dt that next value should be used to insert values into that particular column. But somehow what happened, a person came and he directly entered into the table and he used the insert statement without dt dot uh, next value and he gave some random value, say 20. That means your sequence has lost now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. After 10, gen directly you will see 20. Why? Because that day has came and inserted the value. So now you complain to the manager saying that sir, somehow somebody has inserted a out of sequence value. Now what to do? So what your manager does? If you do one thing, you just uh, update your uh, state file from yesterday's. So what would be the value in the state file? 11 would be there, right? So next time when you run, it should pick from 11 and it would generate the next 10 records, generally speaking. So your manager says that don't run using 11, why because up to 20 it would generate, 20 is already being inserted by a wrong fellow, so it would generate problems. So what you need to do, you need to update the state file. How you can update the state file means, up to what extent you need to update, if you update the state file to 21, from next run it would pick 21 and it would start generating the unique values. You understood right the concept? Yeah. So how you are going to update is, in the row generator, see, number of records that I am going to generate is 23. Okay. Now what it is going to do, it is going to generate 23 records for me now. Okay. okay. And this, when you when you generate 23 records for you, what would be the, when you open the state file, what would be the value? 24. Yeah, exactly. So it always holds the next going to be generated value. So you have updated the state file in this way. Okay, originally the state file may be 11 may be value. Once you use this row generator equal to 23, it would give 11 plus 23. Or if state file doesn't have any value, it would directly give 24. Okay. You, you are able to understand, right? The setting that you have to use here is input column name equal to dummy. Why? Because this dummy is the value that you are com getting from your uh, row generator. Using this particular column, this particular input column, using this particular input column, you need to update the uh, source, uh, sorry, the state file. That is what the meaning. Key source update action you are having, update as well as create and update. If you don't have any source file itself, let us say, if you use this option of create and update, it would create a source file. That means a, a, a uh, state file for you and it then updates the state file. You got it, right? What I am saying? Mm, yeah. So you understood or do you want me to? I understood. Fine. And coming to the source name, this is the file name that I am giving. Now the folder got changed, that's it. C input st.txt. <coughs> and source type file equal to flat file. Now what I am going to do, I will use our flat file and I will uh, update the uh, value to see how it is going to generate. Once I give this value and if I compile the stage, what would happen? Now what would be the value that would be there in surrogate key views uh, that file? Previously, the uh, last generated value that we will show it as 11. Now what would be the value? In state file? Yes. Previously it was there 11, right? Last when we viewed the file, uh, the next generated value that's going to be 11, it showed up as. Now we are generating 23 records extra. What would be the value? 23 plus 11. Hmm. So you would be getting it as 34. 4. Okay, 34 would be your next generated value. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would be the block size now? Block size means once uh, as 25, 25 uh, uh, is the block size and now you are at 34. That means 25 has already crossed, right? Yeah. 
So once it crosses, when it touches 26, it would again uh, generate 25 surrogate keys. Now what would be the value there? 50. You are able to follow me? It will add the previous one also. Yeah, it would just show that uh, 50 is the, the previously 25 surrogate keys have been generated. Now I am going to generate extra 25, right? Because block size is always 25. When the okay. value crosses 25 and 26 touches, it generates 25 extra surrogate keys for you. So it would okay. be 50. 50. Showing up the previous value. Hmm. What is happening? So one second, what we will do is, I will see why it is not getting updated. I will update it using the row generator itself here. If I use uh, some uh, 20 records here, it would cross the 25 and you should be able to see that extra generated values, right? You are able to understand what I am doing, right? So the earlier job, ideally the row generator should update it, but somehow it is not updating. What we will do, we are having the original job of row generator to surrogate key generator. If I use this, at least it should uh, update the particular state file, right? I am I am giving this extra value of 20, so that 20 plus earlier generated 11, that would be 31. So 31 means 25 has already crossed, so output would be 31 plus 50 now. I mean 31, uh, 50 in the state file should be. We will see what would be the... See, 31 comma 50. You are able to understand, right, how the demo file is being uh, shown here. Do you think? 31? 31, 31 means now uh, I have changed the setting for the previous job run of surrogate key to generate 20 now. 20, okay, 20 plus. Okay, earlier it was 11 and now when I gave 20 records to be generated, 20 plus 11, 31. Hmm. And uh, as I have given fixed block size of 25, run to run, not run to run. Remember that run to run will not uh, generate the block size. If uh, Now if I run once again, it, won't, uh, it would generate once again the block size. If I change it, uh, the row generate value to 10, and if I run, here it won't uh, see it as 75. Remember that. Once this count crosses, then only uh, extra block size would be written. If, uh, if you say now if I run once again the job for only 10 records, the value here it would be shown up as 41 and 50 only. It will not show 75. Once 50 crosses, then only you will get 75. You got it, right? What I am saying? Means if 51 is there, means we can get 75. That's what yes, you are saying. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. Okay. <coughs> and uh, coming to this thing, I think it's not taking the uh, it's internally it's taking only yesterday's or previous day's data that it was a problem. I just have to check it and compile it once again or I will delete this job and I will rewrite the same job. I don't know, yesterday's record is taken. Anyway, <coughs> you are able to understand right how we can update the uh, state file and all. Yeah. So I will just put yesterday's setting and I will delete. Okay, fine. Now coming to uh, 
the other one. Mm. Now let us say without input, see when you use a surrogate key only with input, that means you are trying to update the state file. Now when you use a surrogate key only with output, that means you are going to generate surrogate keys out of it without having any input source. Now see the values that gets the properties changes now when you use only as output. What are the values that came extra? Everything remains same. The only value that came extra is number of records that need to be generated. If you give 10 means 10 records would be generated from the surrogate key. That is what the meaning out of it. Now you are using source name is equal to sp.txt. Source type is equal to flat file. Generated output column name equal to sp. Remember this only property that came extra is number of records to be generated as output. When I am using only with output, what I am going to do, I am compiling and running it. I will once again show you what the view state file would hold in this scenario. You are able to follow me, right? Yes. Once I run it, okay, what would be the view state file values now? I have given 10 records to be generated for that file. View state values. Oh, what is that? So S key is not there. That is the reason it showed. Actually, I should select this one, right? Other file. Got it right? So what would be the state state file state values now? But ten records. Hmm. Twenty. No, already we have got the value of thirty one there, right? Thirty one, okay. Thirty one comma fifty. Now I am trying to generate the extra ten records now. So it will be thirty one plus ten. That means forty one would be there. Okay. We'll see. You are able to follow me, right? You don't get confused. I'm using the same source file. I'm not changing it. So earlier when we viewed the file, if it is showing up 31, now if I'm trying to generate extra 10 surrogate keys, okay, now the value that would be there is 41. And what would be the block size? Before it's picked up, it's 50, right? Hmm. Now what it would, what it would be? 50 plus 10? No, 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 no. Block size will always increment by only block size. That means okay. if 50 crosses, then only 75 will come. Now 31 plus 10, 41 only, right? It having crossed the 50. So it would get the records from, sorry, it would get the values from cache memory. Once 50 crosses, then only we require this particular thing. See? 41 okay. is the last generated value, 50 is still being shown. Why? Because once 50 is touched, this particular value, once 50 is crossed, then only this one changes to 75. Then only it generates extra 25 values. Okay. Now yeah. we have completed view, update, surrogate key I will show, generate 10 records is done, generate surrogate key is done, delete surrogate key is done, db, db surrogate key, db, uh, db key. Okay. Now what we are going to do, now not only the surrogate key, can not only be generated using this stage, we can also generate it using mm, transfer. Okay. Row generator is there. Here, ideally speaking, in all our previous examples, we have used the surrogate key generator. Now, if you observe in the transformer, when you double click on the transformer, there is a function. Okay, that actually uses the surrogate key operator and generates the unique values for it. <coughs> Don't worry about this. Once again, I will explain you what the transformer and what are all the functions that would be that would be there. In that, once again, I will show you the surrogate key generator. What my point? What is the point that you should take out of here is 
surrogate key generator is not the only stage that you can use to generate the surrogate key values. There are certain functions within the transformer which you can use to generate the surrogate key values for you. This is the function I am speaking about. I have created one new column input underscore key. What is the value that input underscore key column will be holding is next surrogate key. Okay, next surrogate key is the function which generates surrogate key for you. So now I told what are the two uh, ways that you can generate the surrogate key. One you, you, you should have the um, demo, sorry, the state file or you should have the sequence. So where you are going to provide the values is see this one stage properties on hand symbol. When you click on this one, you have to mention what is the surrogate key mode that you are going to use. See here tabs are there, lot of tabs are there. In the surrogate key tab is there, right? Click on the surrogate key tab. Here you will be able to see whether you are you want to generate the surrogate key out of a, a state file or database sequence. You got what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Once you mention here, it will use this demo file to read the data from your file. Now here you know this value of initial value. Initial value means it is going to retrieve. Uh, it it going to starts with one. Now e blocks of 25 means if you give 25 or 50, you understood the concept of block size, right? It is going to generate that many blocks size at the time. So this is the function. Remember, no need to use sort stage itself. In the transformer itself, you can use this function and you can use and you can generate the surrogate key values. Generally, in our application, we would be using this function, not the external surrogate key generator. Until and unless you require something special functionality which surrogate key provides, you need to go there. Otherwise, you can use this next surrogate key. Okay? You are able to understand, right? Yeah. And in the same way, yeah, I have mentioned the uh, sequence. In the previous example, I have shown you uh, here next surrogate key function is again used. Okay, in the previous thing I have showed you how to read it from the flat file. That means your demo file. Now what I am going to do, I have configured it to read from database sequence. See, RAM is the sequence name that I have earlier created. If you want, you can put it as DP. You Oracle type as Oracle, start, password is there. And the server name is Oracle. Once I run, it would generate the values out of your database sequence. Understood, right? Just remember the settings. We will anyhow see it once again in the what we say in your uh, transformer. This DB create uh, surrogate key is uh, uh, one more way that you will be generating the values. You will be just seeing see database type I have given as Oracle. Generated output name column is S key. This is the column where we are going to hold the surrogate keys and source name is RAM. Why? Because RAM is the sequence name that I have generated inside my database. Okay. Source type is equal to database sequence. Okay, then only these properties comes activated, right? Source type equal to database sequence means then it will ask you to give me the connection details and then uh, source name. That is my sequence name. Now options. Number of records that needs to be generated are 10. When I run, just to see how database uh, sequence is going to be generated. That's it. We are done with the surrogate key. Tomorrow, uh, we will connect at uh, 7.30 in the morning. And uh, please, uh, just for two days, uh, what you say, uh, bear with me so that we can complete the six hours of training tomorrow and after tomorrow. Just two Seven, days. 7.30 to 10.30? Huh, that is what I am requesting, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just for two days. Uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. We will cover six hours and we will complete the processing stages. That's okay. Maybe not. Can, hmm? That's okay, you can tell slowly. Means what I am saying is in the weekdays uh, by taking one hour you can take one and a half hour like that so that we can complete. No, the thing Anywhere. is, uh, yeah one and a half hour actually your session is uh, for one and a half hour only. We will uh, start at 6.30 and you will end at 8 only. Yeah. Before that we, we will not close. But from Monday onwards uh, we will try to connect at 6 and we will end at 7.30. Okay. Today whatever time we have connected we will use that time. Today as I have got demo, I will be closing this within uh, one hour, sorry, by one hour. Okay. From next session onwards, we will connect for one and a half hour. Okay. Okay. The thing is, I am having a small obligation, that is why I am requesting you, afterwards I will not be available for certain duration, so I am very, I wanted to complete the class for you, that is why I am asking. <laughs> okay. So, so, can you... Tomorrow, thirty. Uh, six thirty. Tomorrow, six thirty. Saturday, right, tomorrow. Tomorrow we will connect at 6.30. Okay. But Sunday, just for one day, connect for me for 7.30, that would be fine. Okay. 
Okay, we will complete three three hours. Why? Because uh, after a certain duration, I am going to take some vacation. Again, if I am not available, uh, it would be something like four to five days stretch. After that, I will come and join. So you will lose this uh, what we say wrap up. That is why. Okay. Okay. See this database. I have run the sequence, and now we will see what are all the values that are generated. DB create sequence. I have used the database sequence here. Okay. When I view the details, see the peak values. They have got the values, right? 61, 62. Why we are getting 61 is uh, last time for uh, last time in previous demos and all I have exhibited this particular database sequence. So that time it used to be 60, the last generated value. So it started with 61 now. Hmm. You got it, right? Uh, no doubts in this part, right? Hmm. Yes. Today I will wind up the class now, Aditi. Uh, so tomorrow we will start with SCD and then I will complete some. Uh, Uh, tomorrow, uh, three hours we will spend. I will complete some six uh, processing stages only. Okay. Tomorrow, okay. my thirty. Same. Ah, six. Uh, yeah, generic time only. You are gener day to day. Uh, today you generate. Uh, you start a class uh, half an hour early, right? Tomorrow you connect uh, as usual at six thirty. Just half an hour delay. I will connect okay. at six thirty. We will continue till nine thirty my time. We will complete some six stages for six to seven uh, processing stages. We will complete tomorrow. And okay. day after tomorrow also we will complete uh, six to seven. We will be completing our uh, uh, processing stages palette completely. Okay. Okay. From Tuesday onwards, freshly we will start server jobs. Okay. Okay. Once our server jobs gets completed within a week time frame, next Saturday Sunday I will try to complete the sequence jobs. Okay. Okay. That is how uh, we will uh, plan it. By ne okay. next Sunday you will be having eighty percent of the training gets completed. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Rikina. We will wind up for today. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks. Tomorrow, okay. remember that we will connect back at six thirty. Six thirty. Okay. Okay, Rikina. Bye. Okay. Okay. Bye.